Hi everyone, my name is uh, Seniha Özdoğru. I'm a headache specialist here at the University of Utah. Uh, today I will try to answer the question if arachnoid cyst, pineal cyst, sinus infection, stroke, or developmental ven venous anomaly, if they can cause headaches. I will start with uh, arachnoid cyst. Arachnoid cyst is a, a, a collection of cerebrospinal fluid and it's a, a, the membrane from the meninges itself. And there are different types of arachnoid cyst. Uh, the very common type of arachnoid cyst is the uh, one that is shown here in the first picture. Uh, it can uh, be on the different location. One is the uh, temporal lobe here, or it can be in the posterior side, or it can be on the frontal area. But uh, the uh, importance here is that it's not causing any pressure on the brain tissue. It's not causing any injury to the brain tissue. We don't see any sign of uh, inflammation or swelling. The picture here, it shows that uh, there is an arachnoid cyst in the parenchyma in the brain tissue itself. Uh, when the arachnoid cyst in the brain tissue, um, it can cause a little bit more problems and it's a very, very rare uh, type. Uh, the third picture here shows an arachnoid cyst, but this cyst is causing some pressure. This uh, blue line here shows the midline, and because of the arachnoid cyst here, it's uh, uh, pushing the uh, left side of the brain to the right, and it's causing a shift. So arachnoid cysts are benign lesions, meaning that they are not malignant, they are not cancerous. Um, the, uh, the shape and the size of the arachnoid usually stays stable, it doesn't grow up. It can be a primary arachnoid cyst, which is the most common type, and it's a developmental uh, anomaly that it happens very early uh, type of, uh, very early time in the gestation. Secondary arachnoid cyst can be happen as a result of a head injury, meningitis, tumors, or it can be a complication of brain surgery. The uh, vast majority of uh, arachnoid cysts, they stay asymptomatic and uh, very rarely they can cause a headache, persistent nausea, or vomiting or visual changes. This mostly happens if the arachnoid cyst is causing any uh, pressure to the brain tissue. And again, uh, it can happen, but it's very, very rare. And that's how we uh, decide if um, someone, uh, uh, when they have arachnoid cysts, if it is causing their headache or not based on uh, looking at the pictures uh, to the brain images and then seeing uh, if it's causing any pressure of the brain, if it is causing any injury to the brain tissue itself. And uh, pineal cyst. Uh, pineal gland uh, is an neuroendocrine gland. It is responsible for um, uh, sleep-wake cycle and it's, um, uh, it's produced melatonin. So uh, it's, uh, the location here is very important. The pineal gland is located uh, here in the uh, kind of on the road of cerebrospinal fluid. And if there's a pineal cyst or tumor or uh, lesion, if it causes any obstruction, then it can cause uh, other problems. So the uh, common problem uh, is the hydrocephalus. So when there is an obstruction, when the pineal uh, cyst, if it causes an obstruction around uh, the, that area, um, then it can uh, cause what we call ventricular megaly. So it enlarges the ventricles because uh, the cerebrospinal fluid cannot go through. So it causes uh, their... Uh, it, and then it causes a pressure to the brain tissue and it makes the ventricle bigger, uh, ventricle bigger, and it cause, that's called hydrocephalus. And um, when someone has hydrocephalus, then they have severe uh, headache and nausea, so it becomes symptomatic. There is a specific uh, syndrome that pineal cyst can cause or pineal lesion can cause. It's called Perinat syndrome. Uh, it's a syndrome that uh, you cannot look up when you look up, you get this um, uh, specific nystagmus, and it also impairs the light reaction. When you put the light uh, in the eye, that it, 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 the, you don't see the uh, normal pupillary light reaction. And uh, the uh, symptoms will be uh, with the pineal cyst uh, or pineal gland lesions are headache, visual disturbances, gain instability, and loss of consciousness. Sometimes pineal cyst doesn't cause hydrocephalus when you look at the images, but it can cause intermittent, uh, intermittent uh, occlusion. So uh, 
it might not cause, it might not be big enough to kind of uh, uh, cause a hydrocephalus, but it might be moving and then sometimes it can cause an occlusion. And then when it caused that, then it might be the uh, reason for intermittent severe headache with um, nausea. So if there's any concern for, uh, if there's a hydrocephalus, then surgery will be indicated and it might be the reason for headache. But um, if there isn't um, a, a hydrocephalus, then the question will be, is, um, is it the reason for headaches or uh, surgery, uh, that surgery will help for headaches or not? Um, so it's important to uh, look into other additional symptoms you are getting with your headaches. And uh, if it fits the criteria uh, with uh, possible intermittent occlusion, cis of occlusion and pineal, uh, you have a pineal cyst on your MRI, then surgery might be indicated. And sinus headache. So um, this is the uh, picture of normal sinuses. We have um, different sinuses, frontal sinus, uh, sigmoid sinus, maxillary sinus, and an ethmoid sinus we uh, show here. The sinuses are uh, full of air. And then when we look at uh, the CAT scans, we see the air as black. So when someone has sinus infection, it causes this layer and we see the, um, we don't see that kind of uh, black area anymore. We don't see the air anymore because there's a fluid here. There is some inflammation. Sinus headache, uh, there are two types. There is acute sinus headaches. Uh, it uh, happens secondary to acute sinusitis. And then uh, usually acute sinusitis or, or with a headache secondary to acute sinusitis, it's not a big problem. We, kind of understands that you get uh, sinus infection, some fever, um, uh, nasal discharge, and you know that you have sinusitis, and then uh, uh, you get a headache, and you get the treatment, the headache goes away. But the main problem usually is the chronic headache and chronic sinusitis or recurring sinusitis. This is a description from uh, International Headache Society. Uh, the headache caused by an infectious or inflammatory disorder of the paranasal sinuses and uh, associated with other symptoms that uh, kind of uh, fits with the uh, signs of uh, sinus disease. The clinical criteria should be there for, uh, to, be, to be able to call it sinusitis. You should have sign of sinusitis, meaning that you should either have some uh, uh, the uh, discharge, uh, nasal discharge, or you should have some fever, or we should be able to see or show the uh, sinus disease or sinusitis, sinus infection on the images or with the nasal endoscope. If these are not there, um, it's uh, very unlikely or uh, unlikely that the sinusitis is causing the headache because there is no sign of sinus infection on the images or the clinical scenario. This is very important because um, there is a very high uh, misdiagnosis rate for sinus headache. Um, the self-diagnosed, many of the self-diagnosed sinus headaches are actually migraines. If you have been having headaches since you were very little, and then um, after 10 years, 20 years, 15 years, you found to have an uh, possible sinusitis or sign, sign of uh, chronic sinus uh, infection in the CAT scan that it becomes a little bit uh, challenge because of the, uh, there are studies showing that there are patients that they don't have symptoms, but they actually have nasal deformi deformities. They have uh, uh, polyps or they have things that they will be causing uh, headaches, but they don't have any symptoms. Or there are patients that they have the diagnosis of migraine, they fit the full criteria for migraine, but then they have some sinus pathology on the uh, CAT scan. So uh, then it becomes a little difficult to uh, understand which one is causing the headache. Do they have sinus headache or do they have migraine? So the other concept is um, uh, we have to understand what's trigger, what's etiology. So you might have migraine, uh, but then you might develop sinus infection and that can be a trigger for your migraine. So you can have both sometimes. You might have migraines for many years and it, it was episodic and then you uh, went into that chronic sinus problems and then you have uh, inflammation in your sinuses and that inflammation can be a trigger for your migraines. 
And when we uh, treat that chronic inflammation in the problem in the sinuses, and that can help to reverse the chronic migraine back to episodic migraine. So uh, there isn't an easy way to say um, it's a sinus headache or it's migraine, but uh, we have to uh, look at the uh, signs and symptoms and the criteria uh, which group your headache uh, fits. Uh, having only uh, images, um, have CAT scan showing some possible sinusitis is not an, uh, an answer. You might go into a surgery and the surgery might not help because you actually had a migraines and uh, you will uh, have gone unnecessary uh, surgeries. So it's very important to be going to detailed history and we'll look at the scans and then you might consider uh, having the uh, ear nose throat doctor involved and then you might consider doing a nasal endoscopy and um, then make the decision if uh, the sinus problems causing uh, migraines or this is a migraine and uh, the uh, little kind of abnormalities we are seeing on the CAT scan for the sinus disease is not and uh, doesn't have anything to do with it. Stroke. Uh, stroke for sure causes headache. It can cause acute headache. Um, you can have a stroke and it can be, a, uh, the headache can be a, a one of the uh, symptoms or you can develop headache uh, within a, a day or two after stroke. That's called acute post-stroke headache. Or uh, uh, unfortunately, some people develop persistent post-stroke headache. Uh, persistent post-stroke headache reported about 23% of patients, and uh, the risk factors are uh, unfortunately younger age, female, and pre-existing headache. If someone has this sort of migraines and then uh, they have a stroke, uh, that's a high risk that they will uh, develop persistent post-stroke headache. If someone has a uh, post-stroke fatigue or depression, uh, these symptoms along with their stroke that they have also high risk uh, for uh, developing persistent post-stroke headache. It's important to consider not only stroke, but uh, also possible structural uh, uh, lesions. If someone has sudden thunderclap headache, especially it's a, a important sign for intracranial bleed. Uh, for subarachnoid hemorrhage, sometimes you might not have any other neurological symptoms, but headache might be the uh, first symptom. And it's a very specific headache. It's, uh, it can be called like ice peak or thunderclub. It's very severe, the worst headache of, of the life, and it can be a sign of uh, intracranial bleed. A uh, new onset headache after age 30. It's important if someone doesn't have a sort of headache and they might not even have a sort of headache migraine in their family and uh, out of the blue they develop headache it's important to look into reasons why this person uh, having a headache and stroke might be one of those reasons change in the characteristic of previous headache. So uh, you are having migraine doesn't mean that every headache you have, it's your migraine. If you are experiencing a different headache, uh, the uh, location of the headache is different. Usually your headache moves, it can be, or they are bilateral both-sided, but you develop this right-sided headache and it doesn't go away, it's always there. Um, we should look into if there is any reason why you are having this side-locked headache that it doesn't move or you were, you were uh, never having aura, but all of a sudden you started having auras, you started seeing things, um, the, the uh, visual auras, or uh, you never had numbness with your headache, but then you develop numbness with your migraine. Um, these are important uh, changes uh, in the characteristic of your headache, the presentation of your headache. It's uh, important to look into if there is any reason, uh, structural reason like a, a stroke that you are having these changes. Um, intractable to, to treatment is another red flag that it um, uh, make us uh, look into the reasons why you are having headaches. Uh, we might uh, diagnose as a migraine, but then you don't uh, respond any of the migraine treatments um, after a couple of trials, then it's time to look into uh, maybe doing a neuroimaging, uh, doing uh, labs, and then see if there is any other reason why you are not responding to treatment. So for sure, stroke can uh, cause headache and uh, we look into these uh, signs or symptoms if something changes or um, uh, sudden headaches or new onset headaches then uh, we look into the uh, etiology and stroke might be one of these etiology. Um, it, when someone diagnosed with stroke it's also important um, to uh, make some changes on the uh, 
current migraine treatments. If you develop stroke and you are taking triptans before, uh, if after stroke diagnosis, you cannot take uh, triptans anymore. You cannot take the hydroergotamines anymore. The other important thing is uh, we should look into the etiology why you are having stroke. Uh, we have to find out if you are having some abnormal heart rhythm that's caused stroke, if you had some carotid artery disease that caused stroke, uh, we have to complete the workup and uh, we have to find out why you had a stroke. And the last part is uh, developmental venous anomaly. Um, what does developmental venous anomaly mean? It's an anomaly of small vein uh, arrangements. It's like um, uh, instead of these uh, small uh, blood vessels that's responsible to take the kind of dirty blood out, it can be enlarged or it can be, uh, it's a shape of like a spaghetti kind of things. And um, the, the good thing or the important thing about developmental venous, venous anomaly, these veins, they still do their job. Um, that's, it's, it's very common. It's the most common intracranial vascular malformation. These are uh, benign lesions. And these are most of the time found uh, incidentally. Uh, so they do not, most of the time, they do not cause any problem. Uh, except if they are uh, associated with other uh, vascular malformations, like if um, someone has developmental venous anomaly in addition to cavernous malformations, then um, there is a risk that this can cause some hemorrhage. So that's why uh, conservative management is the treatment option uh, when we see developmental venous anomaly because the risk of surgery is actually uh, more than the developmental venous anomaly can cause any problems. So um, they do not cause any headaches. They do not cause any other signs or symptoms uh, unless if there are some other vascular malformations in addition to the developmental venous anomaly is present. And this was the last one. So I will uh, finish my presentation here. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight, and I hope this information helps you. Have a good night.